Well, I think it's time uh, for us to start about now. Hello, everybody. I see there's already a couple of people uh, watching and waiting, and all you get got to see so far is a utterly boring still screen. So I replaced that with a equally boring still screen that will save us uh, for the next couple of seconds. I just want to say hello, my name is uh, Joseph, also known as Lita the Second on a variety of developer resources such as GitHub, uh, Freenode, uh, here, Twitch, whatever. Um, so welcome to the, I think, third Yocto Project live coding session today. And now it's time so you can actually see me. Unbelievable. Right from the nearest pub at my home, as usual, I have a drink here. This one's non-alcoholic. I mean, we got some work to do. Um, first things first, uh, I gotta point out that um, while I am talking about a specific topic today, which is uh, package splitting and dependencies, which is, or oh, this is what I've planned for today. There, feel free to ask whatever questions you have about the Yocto project, open embedded technology, um, anything that is related to it. Just shoot them straight at us and uh, chat on Twitch, which is the most easy if you are registered on Twitch, or and hash Yocto in uh, on Freenode. This is using uh, IRC, so if you are on IRC. Head over there, and right down there, if you are watching uh, on the Twitch homepage, then you ha uh, there's a link that uh, leads you directly to uh, the web interface of Freenode into the hash Yocto channel. It's under, I think, let me, let me check for a second. Uh, under about the Yocto project, last uh, item IRC, if you click it, you should be uh, forwarded uh, straight to the channel, you pick your username and you can uh, talk to us instantly without uh, any any more formalities and we are not constantly monitoring Twitch but Hashiokto is uh, manned and active about 24-7 or 22-7 we gotta sleep sometimes too but mostly we're, there's somebody around okay so that's about the chat and we have uh, we have heard in the last couple of times that um, Yocto is a piece of technology that's pretty hard to get your head around. So we've created a page especially for new newcomers. Um, and surprise, surprise, it's called uh, Newcomers. You can find it on um, on the Yocto wiki. I will shoot the link into the um, into the Twitch chat right now. So if you are watching us for the first or second time and you are still new to the whole thing, uh, this is the, the most condensed form of uh, resources that you will probably find at this point in time. Uh, the Yocto project is pretty is fluent in what it does. So this might be amended, outdated, improved um, in the near future. We will see. It's just uh, thought I'd mention it already and I think I'll point out especially the chat topic in the next no, no idea how long we'll take, half an hour uh, or 45 minutes, a couple more times because those who join in later should also notice that we are on IRC and you do not have to register on Twitch. We do not make any money of it. We do not make any ads. We are not a Twitch partner. So we don't. There's, there's nothing for us to gain here. Okay, so now to the topic. Um, I will assume that you have worked your way through the quick start guide. So you have a, a simple build up and running, which means you have checked out Pocky, you have created a build directory and you have run at least a simple build. Because without that, what would we want to add anything to? 
We will, for, devel uh, for demonstration purposes today, we will use a library that I uh, created especially for today. It is called libAnswer, because it gives you the answer. You can see the, the, the cursor blinking at my, in my home, uh, in my build directory. This is um, an absolutely uh, classic setup, just source pocky OE in it, env, and that's it. So, the easiest way to add a something, uh, add a new package is through DevTool, as usual. And for sake of completeness, I will show you uh, DevTool help. You can see it, uh, it needs subcommands. Is a choice of mostly add, modify, upgrade, status, search, build, rename, edit recipe, um, and there should be a, a short help text for each of those. We want to add a new recipe for the lib answer. So here we go. Dev tool add. Have a look again, and it says. We need a new recipe name, just a name, and probably we should provide some uh, some means of getting the source that we want. In this case, I put it on GitHub, so you can all grab it and try for yourself. Libanser, and here is the link. GitHub lead to the second Libanser. So if I kick this off, DevTool runs and checks out my source and tries to, to figure out what's going on there. And it tells me, hooray, has been automatically created. Unbelievable. So is there reason to believe that, it's, that it is that simple, really? Maybe. Let's find out. I will try to bit bake it. Bit bake lib answer. Time for a drink, as usual. It runs off. It, uh, checks it out. Do configure. Hopefully, compile, package, and all the things that one would expect if a new package is being built. No errors so far. That might be looking good, does it? QA, we pass QA, and only one warning. Summary, we should be fine, ain't we? So, we could now look at the recipe, or we could just see what's going on. Usually, looking at the recipe is enlightening, but not so much fun. So, we are doing it the other way around this time, run QMU. We are on QMU arm because I like QM arm and example image. Um, the explanation on where example image comes from was in the last stream session. Uh, I checked 10 minutes ago. It is not yet up on YouTube, but should be in the very, very near future. So you should be able to watch the, the whole, um, the whole uh, series of streaming sessions that I'm doing at any time, hopefully also in order, so you can make out the, the, the progress that because some some knowledge builds upon each other. Uh, if I had to e explain how how to create your uh, new image every day, we wouldn't be doing any anything else. So let's get QMO while I check into the the chat for a second. No news so far. Very good. Oh, okay, forgot my image uh, password. And I think we are we are fully booted. So, what is there? Hmm. 
no idea, right? I installed an, a recipe. In this case, because I wrote it, I know that it should bring um, a binary called ask. I can ask, and the answer is 42. That is surprising. You see me surprised because I did expect something else. Not in, in terms of the number, I did expect an error. Which can happen because that's live coding. Anyways, um, one thing you should be wondering right now, it is a library. Um, it is not a library. I went even uh, I went even wrong more. Ah, because this is an old old one. Okay, see that's live coding. Power off. I, I, I messed up my own demonstrations. You will instantly see why. Here is my image. I did actually not rebuild it. I did not expect that. Here is libanser. We need to edit. Uh, I, I, I really did the very, very same error. I get, um, I get asked so much about it. I, I bit bake the, the recipe and the image does something else. Why, the, why on earth is it doing that? Because I only rebuilt the, the recipe, not the image. So this time, bit bake example image. Why did it work right now? Because, of course, I, I prepared my stream at least a little and the, the, the working image was still there. My bad. Don't do it. Or do it at home and wonder why. Fixing errors is also very, very um, enlightening at times. At some times. So, the example image is being rebuilt. And then we gotta start our um, run QMU again. Hopefully. Okay, here it goes. Run QMU. Many, many funny things. You're gonna see this a couple of times. If, if you are being bored by, by the QMU booting screen, make sure you join our chat at hashyokto on Freenode and tell us that you're being bored. Bad, bad feedback is better than no feedback at all. Okay, so now, I happen to know that there should be ask. Ask, oh, okay. This is the error I, I wanted, because the answer is something is not found. Why is something not found? How could we know that it is being needed? Probably not at all. That's one of the problems with dependencies. Um, so this brings us to the demonstration of runtime dependencies. In this case, um, the library that I'm using, which I will tell you the, the correspondence with ASK in a couple of minutes, is obviously using BC. So why is BC not there? Because upon creation of, of the recipe, there there was nothing, no way to, to recognize this dependency. And you, you, you saw that the source code could be happily built without it. So it's obviously not a build time dependency. We can build and install the whole recipe without getting any error, without getting stuck. It's just a runtime dependency. It will only crash when you are actually trying to run and use it. And this is the, the main difference between a dependency and a runtime dependency. And this is the point in time when, it, uh, when we want to look at the recipe now. So, we shut down QMO. I hope you can hear the, the pop's background music. It's awful dinner jazz, really. Mixed with awful pop. Edit recipe. And uh, libanser. It was called libanser. Def, def to edit recipe. And now you can see uh, a couple of things. One is inherit CMake 
if you um, wonder where this came came from, uh, check out the last stream upon uh, image and recipe creation, where I uh, did a, uh, did explain uh, a couple of build systems. But the the really 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 funny part here is it depends on boost. This one is uh, visible in in the CMake files. So recipe tool, as pointed out in the first. Uh, line could actually inspect and detect it. So if I'm uh, trying to to build Levancer and Bitbake makes sure that boost as a dependency as a as a build time dependency is already around, installed and ready to use. As in contrast, we now have a random runtime dependency. Uh, and in, in Bitbake uh, lingo, it's uh, an R depends for LibAnswer. Uh, you remember the error message, hopefully, which uh, told us BC is not found. BC is one of my classic examples because I like calculators. Okay, R depends BC. Now, dependencies and R dependencies have one more speciality. Um, depends. Um, are prepared per the recipe, but runtime dependencies are per the package because we will talk about package splitting later. So we need to restrict the R depend and R depends to uh, the package called Libanser, which we are doing by this appendix. This tells Bitbake that the R dependence for Libanser is BC. Hopefully, got everything right. So now we do bit bake um, example image again, and now we should be recompiling libanser because we have. Um, I think it should not. Let's see. Let's see. R Richard probably just goes nuts with all the uh, stupid things I'm saying right now, or Kergoth or Frey or whoever's whoever's listing. But the the root file system gets recreated. This this actually makes sense. So here we are. It's recreated. We boot our image again. I could tell a joke each time we um, we boot run QEMU. Now ask. Okay, here it goes. This is what I would have shown you right now for the first time, but my bad. So here here you see again. Um, now that we have set up the 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 run the runtime dependency correctly, um, Bitbake makes sure that. Um, BC is also installed into the image because libanser needs it. I did not explicitly add BC to the image. I only added libanser, but this pulled it in. Okay, this is, is the runtime dependency, and now I'm gonna show off how um, a build time dependency should break if being missed or not properly de detected. I actually did not care to uh, create an example which um, makes it hard for recipe tool to detect the dependency and therefore for would break on the first time. So now I uh, removed the dependency on boost. I Clean state libanser just to make sure it, it really really gets rebuilt. But bake libanser. We do the whole thing from the beginning again. And now 
there should be the, the other other one fun answer error okay here it is no build for you this is this is what happens very very often you add a new recipe it runs off it tries to build and something is missing and then it's it's actually your not not exactly funny but um need a task to scroll up and check the output of the f of the first uh, of of the of the bit bake build attempt and in this time in this case you can see unable to find the requested boost libraries so if you're seeing things like like that things breaking during uh do configure uh, or do uh, compile and it's most probably a uh, a runtime uh, a build time dependency with it should fail on uh, do configure because that means that the configure scripts are doing a good job and really checking if uh, everything is in place and if it fails during uh, compile then it's it's a rather bad sign because it means the the configure script is not actually checking what it's trying to do it just uh, makes the compile stage rely on on something which could also mean that there are hard-coded paths or, or comparably nasty things so in that that case you you might be in for for even a little more fun okay these are the dependencies let me check the chat if anybody had a fun question no fun questions no not even any fun greetings i think i'm talking to myself which is kind of cool right I mean, I'm, I'm sitting in a pub here and people are passing me by every couple of seconds and looking at me. What is this guy uh, talking about? Cool, right? So, um, we have talked about the dependencies. For those of you who have ever written a library or packaged one, should have uh, rung a bell. Where, uh, when I demonstrated I installed a library and a binary showed up namely ask how does how how comes I mean if I install a library I actually want the library to be installed and not anything else related to it this is because in in the uh, in the CMake file of libanser it also created an example uh, binary to to show off uh, libanser which is often a good thing but not not necessarily and if you are just out for the library and have a, another package that relies on it you usually only want the library and not anything unnecessary that just clutters your file system takes up the space uh, and if even if you never ever need it so you have two options you can either patch the the build system or the build system scripts in this case cmake list text or you can split the package patching is not exactly what we usually want because it affects um, the sources and it will have funny funny effects if um, if upstream sources change usually so we want to do the package splitting thing package split splitting means that bitbake knows enough about the the install stage so it does not only create the package that the name and the recipe sets up it also um, creates additional packages where into which parts of the install can go and that could be installed upon request so let's have a look I've already got my dependencies back. 
So, we want packages lib answer and a, a classic means of doing this is lib answer example or examples. By inserting this line, I tell Bitbake that this recipe should not only create the, the canonical packages that the recipe does. I think we've talked about it last time. Did we talk about it? If not, please shoot me a note and I will, uh, I will have a deeper look at the, at the canonical splitting. And I think it's even better if we, if we write, write it like this. In case somebody renames something. So now Bitbake knows we need another package. Is this already enough? Usually not. Let's see what happens. And let me see uh, one, one small thing for a second. Um, I've seen the question in the chat before uh, concerning the last two live sessions. Um, yes, they should be up on YouTube really, really soon. We've had a, a, a small problem concerning the file transfer because I'm living in Germany and data going over the pond into non-Germany is always complicated. But um, the data is out there and should be up on YouTube really, really soon. Twitch does only keep streams for, I think, two weeks. And as I only do a, a session every month, unfortunately, every time I, I do a new session, everything else is gone already. But we, sh we, we are really, really out to uh, make sure that... Uh, yes, yeah. Um, will be will be out for you really really soon and if not please keep back and poke us on on Twitter Facebook especially RC and we will try our very very best to help you okay let's check back I got no error which is surprising but I, not not exactly what I what I expected. Let's let's see. Bit bake um, the answer. Uh, this is one of the classic um, chores when when uh, doing recipe development. But actually, it looks good. It says packages, a lib answer, example source, debug, static dev, and everything that I would expect. I would I would have I would have um, wanted RPM to crash, scream, do less than funny things. Probably have changed to something that um, does not crash and burn. Oh, it does not. It, it is RPM. Um, you see me surprised again. Okay, but I, um, if we look at at the example image, you see I only got libanser in there. I do not have libanser example installed at the moment and if I bit bake the image we'll see what happens
just a question, is it also as hot where you are as where it is where I am? I, th I think I'm, I'm living somewhere in the rainforest at the moment. It's hot and it's damp and hopefully rain soon. Check. There's a fly on my screen. Hmm. Rude. Okay. So is Ask still around? Ask is still around. This is not what he, what we wanted. So now we need to really, really uh, tell Bitbake what goes into the examples. And then this is what we're going to do next. Just to the answer. Gonna do we this time we need the files package. Basically there's a uh, a files variable for every package that um, gets built. So packages is you tell Bitblake to split into what and files is then telling Bitbake what you split into. So we set one new files variable which is, you should read, di read this as files of um, package name example. In this case, package name is libexample, uh, lib So this is files of libanser example is. I hope this is, this is clear. And let me just do this for, to make it more pretty. And usually a binary goes into user bin. So we hope user bin ask is also there too. We bit bake again. And I've already streamed half an hour. You might have noticed it's time for another drink, as usual, as every time. because I'm streaming from a pub. Somebody brings my beer. I don't have to stand up and get it. I notice this is a rather uh, slow session, but it, uh, it just fits, fits the air here. Not, nothing quick happens these days. So this is hopefully the one one of the last times we we run run QML because you see no more ask. This is good, right? But only if libanser is still around. So let's see where do you uh, li libraries usually go? User lib was there and here it is libanser so but not the example so i think this this worked one way we split ask out of the package and in case we want it back we we need to add it into the image again and we're going to do this now Lebanser example. Rebuild example image. And again, the root of S is being built.
This can unfortunately not really be, uh, be cached, so we have to endure it every time. And when this is done, I will hopefully run Bitbake for the last time today on the stream. Uh, I will hopefully run, run QEMU for the last time on the stream today when ASK is around again. And so here it is again. This is what what I wanted to see. Okay, so what um, what have we talked about today? We talked about um the distinction between build time dependencies the, uh, and runtime dependencies how to add the uh, either one of them to a recipe we have talked about the fact that when you are using a dev tool or recipe tool they can be recognized automatically sometimes but not necessarily and the more complex um the package that you are trying to to add is the um, the greater the chance that there is something hidden in the dependencies that you are not aware of and probably not even the the original maintainer is because those maintainers usually do build only on their desktop distributions they they code they build they test and if you if you ever only um, run your code on on Ubuntu, let's say Ubuntu, and you you maybe would never ever realize that you are relying on wget or such because that's on, always installed on your standard desktop distribution, or, or at least it was when I was still using Ubuntu. So, uh, a developer doing that would probably not even realize that this is a dependency. He would not, not try and check it on his configure scripts. So, if, if you are seeing strange errors that come from dependencies not being checked in the configure, but only uh, uh, erroring out during compile or even at runtime, it's always worth reaching out for the for the maintainers and asking if this is intended and if not, maybe sending a patch to to check earlier. So I think we are we are a little bit early still today. Let's see if. Any questions? No. Anything? So shall we? If nobody, if nobody shoots a question in the next like ten seconds, I'll have another sip of beer, and then we'll we'll look into the default images uh, in, into the uh, default. Uh, splitting. I should recap the last part of the exercise, says Marco. Um, the package splitting. I think that's valid. I just don't really, really know how to do it. I will peek into the into the package splitting that happens by default and then repeat and try to recap and reword the splitting in the recipes, okay? Uh, the actual needing of it. Yeah, okay. I think we should even look at some, some recipes, at real recipes that do the splitting because it happens in so, so, so many packages. Any ideas, Marco? Mm. 
What 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 does a is what is a classic example of um, package splitting? I mean something like Python is obviously, but the the recipes are are super complicated and not exactly suited for for this session. If if Timo steps up into the uh, advanced Python packaging stream, <laughs> we should be super fine. But um, okay. Marco says, show the image, uh, show the recipe. I do show the recipe. And I'll try to, to, to revert and walk through the to, through the lines again. Ah, okay. One, one thing that uh, popped up on hash Yocto on RC lately was Evaluation order. It, it was not not obviously the problem, but it turned out to be. Um, I did it intentionally right this time. Um, recipes get evaluated from top to bottom, which means um, everything that happens in an inherit line can be overwritten later on, which I did intentionally here to make sure that whatever happens in CMake, which hopefully does not affect packaging, but sometimes you cannot be sure in CMake you can probably, but there are other classes. Um, so nothing is there that could overwrite my packages and files line. Okay, so did Marco add anything? Yeah, packages and files magic. Mark already does, a, I think, a good job of um, a short explanation, and I'll try to to add a bit on it. If you are if you are a, a developer of an open source package that has various uses as a library, and you ship examples with it. Then, in most cases, there things are getting better, but usually the, um, the build of the library also builds the, the examples. And if you install the library with make install, then also the examples get installed into your file system. This is not a problem on a desktop distribution. You have about this much space and about this of examples, I mean, you also have man pages, right? Um, so this is not a problem. But if you're doing embedded development, you care about the size of your file system. You care about things that are nice, but you don't want on your target. I mean, nobody's gonna read man pages or use the examples of a library on your industrial control system or your coffee maker or whatever you are actually building using the Yocto project. So you want to actually take the install stage that the maintainer created and split it into, into separate things that you can install as needed. Because you as a developer might actually want the examples to, to find and test and debug things, but you are probably not going to ship them in your product. So this is, I think, the main reason for, for package splitting. And we are doing it in the recipe because this is the one thing that we can control. This is the thing we know and we do not care about or mostly not care about what the rest of folks are doing. If we would need to reach out for the maintainers each time they would they would go crazy imagine you're a, a, your library developer and each and every build system or distribution steps up to you and says yeah hey but i need i need your install stage a little bit different uh, you uh, you would go crazy so um you could, we could either carry patches to the install stage which is what we usually do not want because carrying patches is, is just a maintenance nightmare. Or we can use the bitbake included mechanisms to do the splitting. And the splitting is done with the two variables packages and files. 
um, packages is a recipe global variable which tells Bitbake which actual packages are created by a recipe. You have to be aware that a recipe, the one file that we are looking at right now, is taking one upstream source thing and will be outputting multiple packages. This is this is an important thing. One recipe, several packages. And image install refers to packages. It does not refer to um, to recipes. This is why I had to to add lib example uh, lib answer example specifically to my to my image. So if you if you add a, or if you need more splitting than the default does you add something to the packages variable. You do this in the recipe and here we are adding packages package name example. I could have also written this which would have had the exact same effect but only as long as nobody tries to rename the recipe because if um, for some strange reason I now decide that the library is called lib final answer, then I would have to patch each and every line where this name appears. And if I if I only uh, refer to the variable pn, short for package name, then Bitbake knows that I'm referring to the name that it um, pulled from the recipe name. Okay, so this is the first part of the magic. It is in this recipe, lib answer, I want to create another package, an additional package that's called lib answer example. Okay, and because Bitbake figures out what goes into the into the canonical packages, this is um, usually the just package name. It is package name debug, uh, which carries the unstripped binaries, and package name um, dev, which carries headers. There's there's a couple more, but those are the canonical three for most uh, cases. Um, it does not know what goes into my custom packages. And here it is. So, so to tell Bitbake what goes into a specific package, I have to tell and to, to do that, I use the files variable. Files, there, there are many um, variables that refer to files because um, there are many packages. Ah, okay, I think we should, we should just um, demonstrate that. Take lib answer. And let's see. Now we're going to check for files. That was a bit too... Uh, so, I think we see a lot of magic that happens internally. Okay, so here it goes. You see that what goes into files libanser is in those directories. Bitpeg also creates a libanser bin, which would have probably suited for um, for the example too, but I wanted to, s to show manual splitting. There is a libanser debug, and there is libanser dev, which carries all the includes that one would usually need to um, to to build against libanser if you're actually doing development on the target, which happens sometimes too. There's libanser doc, 
which carries nothing, hopefully. But you see that pet bag already does split by default, and you can add additional packages that get split out. And this can this can make a lot of sense. For example, I think GPG, for example, is like it it brings a, a library that you can link against, and it brings a binary that you can use. But sometimes you only want to use the library from your code, and you do not care about the GPG V or what's it called um, binary. So you would only install libgpg probably but not libgpg slash uh, dash gpgv. And you can inspect the, the result of the files variable per package in bitbake minus e as ever so often. And here you can also see what I pointed out. libanswer dash example carries exactly that one binary. So I hope that was that was uh, clear enough. Uh, again, the question where the previ previous videos are. Yes, um, we we cannot store them for extended periods of time on on Twitch. They will be up on YouTube hopefully really really soon. And when they are, we will shoot out a notice through. Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and and everything. Okay, so Marco, was that okay? Clear enough? Extensive enough? Because if if no more questions, no more ideas, clarifications needed, I think I think I will close the session then. I already did a little bit longer than I expected, which is not a problem. I'm just surprised because I felt it was like a rather slow, slow one with all those those reboots of RunQML. And that strange dinner jazz pop in my background. It says, would you lie to me, baby, at the moment? Want me to sing along? Hopefully not. And I'm not lying to you. Okay, so no more questions? Then? Bye-bye, folks. Um, I'll close the session for today. Thank you very, very much for having us on your screen and on in your ears again. Don't forget to ask, like, send emails, everything that's that's cool these days. The easiest way to reach out for us is through the mailing list or on hash Yocto on Freenode through RC. The links are all in the Twitch page right down. And so long, see you next month. I take topic requests because I think I'll, I'll do one more session on, on something a little bit more involved and then another uh, round on the quick start because it changes every now and then and there are new questions every now and then. So I think one, one more complicated session. Uh, shoot me ideas, shoot me topic requests. Probably, hope, hopefully nothing too specific and complicated because if it, if it needs a specialist then it's probably not for my newbie stream um, and then another round on the on the quick start in August so that's it and bye bye